Timelines are crucial to your genealogy research, from putting your ancestor in time and place to sorting out individuals who perhaps have the same name. Timelines are, your geneal are a genealogist's best friend. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a genealogy timeline using Google Sheets. Hey guys, if we haven't met before, I'm Lisa with the Are You My Cousin. This YouTube channel is designed to help you find your ancestors, grow that family tree, but not get overwhelmed in the process. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, you are in the right place. Today we're going to be talking about genealogy timelines and I really love to use a good timeline. I find it to be absolutely crucial when it comes to solving some of those more difficult genealogy research problems. Why a timeline to begin with? Well, a timeline shows gaps in genealogy research. It shows the gaps. It shows records, perhaps areas of times, periods that maybe I don't know enough about my ancestor for a particular time. So it reveals gaps in research. Timelines can also show you straight up mistakes that you've made in your genealogy research. I've plotted out individuals on a timeline and only to realize that from the time I have them being born to the time that I have their death date, that's about 150 years. Obviously, I've made a mistake somewhere and I need to take a closer look at what I've done. So it definitely will help you find and identify some mistakes that you have there. Another thing that I find that genealogy timelines help with is when I am trying to sort out individuals who have the same name. Now this happens, if you have, particularly if you have an ancestor with a common surname or a common first name, we find individuals of the same name in the same locations. And that gets a bit tricky. But I find when I use timelines and compare the two, that can help me sort out these individuals. Another reason to use a timeline is patterns. Uh, when I create a, a timeline and I put an individual on that timeline, I am frequently looking for patterns. I'm looking for patterns of movement, patterns of migration, perhaps. So I'm looking to see if I can trace that pattern of migration and does it match other known individuals for that family tree. I'm also looking for patterns of names. I'm looking for patterns not only of movement, but I'm looking for patterns of people who are associating with them. Do I see other common surnames that are continually showing up close to that ancestor on that timeline. So I'm looking for the patterns, again, not just movement patterns, but patterns of who is around them. What are they doing? Do I see common patterns showing up? Another reason to use genealogy timelines is that they point you to new records. They can potentially point you to a new record. So as you are plotting your individuals, your ancestors' dates and their the events of their lives on a timeline, you might start to recognize Oh, I need to learn again more about what was happening in the area during this time period. It can point you to records that maybe you hadn't thought to look at. You may recognize, oh wait, I have them selling land, but then I don't ever have them moving, but I don't have them buying land. What was going on? Let me check and see, did I miss a deed? Did I miss something in there that I perhaps could have looked at? Now there are a variety of types of timelines that you can create. You can create them using paper and pencil. And I have done that in the past. I, in fact, I will still continue to do that when I need to hyper-focus on a particular area that I'm researching. And perhaps I just need not to be tied up in the tech because I like to play with the tech and see what else I can push that program to do. But sometimes I need to get away from that. So sometimes paper and pencil can go a long way in doing that. And if I'm getting really fancy, I might even use a colored pencil or two in there. You can also create a timeline from your genealogy family tree software. So if you are using anything such as like a, a family tree maker type of software, you can create a timeline from there as well. So that's another place to create it, just to download it. I personally find creating one in a spreadsheet or creating one on paper and pencil because I have to manually enter it, enter the data, it helps me to internalize what I'm looking at a little bit better. That's just how I personally work. Some people can just print one off, have one generated and, and take it from there. I find that when I can either type or write, then I'm doing, I internalize it a little bit better. So try and see what works well for you. If you have your family tree online, such as at Ancestry or MyHeritage, you, know, you can actually create timelines there. MyHeritage actually has a fantastic little timeline feature. In fact, I will, I've done a video on that and I will link that in the description below as well as in the upper right hand corner. You'll see a link to that as well. So you can learn that as well. But so I can use those as well and like those a lot. Again, one of the things I really like having the ability to do wherever I make a a timeline is to be able to color code it because I find adding color it helps again helps me to see those patterns and follow the, the timeline a little bit better okay 
So let's talk about that Google Sheet timeline though. So I'm going to turn the camera around. I'm going to take you over to um, open up a Google Sheet and I'm going to show you how I create my genealogy timeline there. All right, so we are over here in Google Drive and I want to show you how to open up a Google Sheets as well as create a basic genealogy timeline that you can use to track your ancestors. So in your Google Drive, essentially you go into plus new over here, this tab, click it come down and I'm going to create a Google Sheets. So this is gonna open up a brand new Google Sheets for me. Let's title this gene just genealogy timeline. Okay, okay, doke. And so we're just gonna start. I usually use this top line. I usually use just a few, I go over to usually around G, <laughs> um, just a few, I don't use the whole width. And I'm going to merge those and just give myself a title here. And this is going to be genealogy timeline. And then I'm going to come back. I'm going to center that. So to center a document is just this little tab here. Hit the center one. Oops, apparently I didn't do it. There we go. Um, I'm also going to enlarge this text because I want this to be, since this is the title, we'll make that an 18. Let's bold it. And I also like to add a little color. So I'm going to go to this little paint bucket. So spill color. And I'm going to choose a color. Let's just choose that light orange color for today. All right. So the next line down, I want to usually put in my ancestor's name. So I can either put it at the top line, but for some reason, I typically do it here. I'm going to merge these. I want all, I just want one solid here. So to merge, if you want to merge cells, you take, you Click one, hit shift, click to the end, and then go into this button here. We can see where the little arrow is pointing in, and that will merge those. So I'm going to probably put in, I could put in my ancestor's name here, which is usually what I do, Joanna Barrett. We use her a lot for our examples. Again, let's just center her there, and then let's go, let's get her into, let's make our text a 12. All right. And then I'm going to move into my column headings here. So that's what I'm going to use here. I'm going to put in the year here. I'm going to put in the age. I like to track the, the life event of an ancestor. So life, oops, life event. Um, next, I'm going to put in the location that event happened. I'm going to put in any notes, a notes field. So if I want to make notes for anything. And again, I usually will actually put in two because sometimes I... I want to keep my notes separate. I don't want everything to be in one square. It might be if I have multiple notes I'm making. And then the last column here is really just research thoughts. So this is kind of where maybe I might do follow-up brainstorming, thinking through a process there. Now, I want to make this, first of all, I want to make this entire row, I want to bold it. I want all of the text to be, say, let's call it 14. You can, and guys, this, you can make it whatever you want. And then I'm going to, uh, I like my column centered. I'm going to hit that little center button there. And we've got everything centered. Okay. Um, this is a good size. This is a good size. I need that life event to be bigger. So to make up, to make the space wider, you want to just hold up. You can see how it gives double lines and you're going to drag it over. And you can make this as big as you want or as small. Location, I want that to be bigger. Notes. I typically make my notes sections the biggest just because I have things to say. And then, of course, my research thoughts can be there as well. Again, I'm going to actually go ahead and color this just so it stands out a little bit better. Again, I held on one, shift, and shift at the end. Go to the paint bucket and choose your color. And then the next thing, I'm ready to fill in my year. So I go ahead and pre-populate. So this is one I will use as a, a template. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-populate all of the cells for the years. Now you can choose whichever range you want. I typically put in a big range, and I'll show you why in a minute. So let's just, for this example, put in 1776. So I type it in, hit enter. It's going to drop down 1777. Drop down 1778. Eight and hit enter. Now I can do that manually, but as you can see, if I have somebody you know, that can go on for quite a while, but we've got a shortcut, of course. So we're going to highlight the top. We're going to highlight that 1788. So again, here's what I did. I hit a highlight 17, oops, 1776 shift. I'm holding the shift button 
and highlighting 1778. Then do you see that little blue dot right there? I'm gonna drag that down and look, it pop it populates. So it knew it knows that I want to add a year each time and it will populate it right on down. So maybe I think, okay, let's go a little further. Again, highlight 1811, hit shift, highlight 1813. I'm going to grab that little dot there and I'm gonna drag it down. And again, you can see it continues to go down. Now, this is really helpful when I'm creating, say, a template that I can just copy it and you know copy it for the next person over as well. But maybe for this particular ancestor, I really am not focused on the 1700s at all. Maybe I really, my research actually might start here at the 1800s. So I don't have to delete anything. I can actually hide some of these so that if I want to come back to them later. So if I say, okay, let's highlight 1776. I'm going to highlight the row. So you can see not just the cell, but I'm highlighting the, the row. So that, that number four, I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to move down and go, okay. And I want to highlight row 27. So I want to hide all of this. I'm not interested in the 1700s at this point for that research project. So I've got everything highlighted. I'm going to right click and it gives me that option. It says hide those rows, four through 27. I click that and they're gone. So they're not, they're still in the document. It's just, they're hidden from view. I don't need to see them and, and get tangled up in them. Um, now, maybe my I do my research and I realize, hey, I actually have some data. Maybe I really do want to now look at those 1700s for whatever reason for my timeline. See the two arrows there. I'm going to highlight those little arrows, the, the up and down arrow, and I'm going to click it and it's going to open those arrows, those back up. So again, we're back into the, we have the 1700s here and I can get hold of those. So that works really well if you've had a create a template and that you're just copying for a new and creating a new one for an ancestor. But you can hide rows that you don't need to look at. Um, and that can be very useful as well. One of the things that I personally like to do, I think it helps in just visualizing is I like to for the decades, I like to highlight the decades. So and color code. So my color code that one you know, let's turn that one orange and it just makes it easier to stand out. Now I can, again, I can do that for each one of these manually and I can click on the paint bucket. I'm gonna click orange again, or I can do that quite easily by this little trick. Let me come down here. Let's come to the 1800s. So I'm gonna highlight that. I'm gonna hold the control button down, not the shift, I'm holding control. And then I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna highlight the 1810 row. And if I want, I can come on down and highlight the 1820 row. And I can just keep doing this. Again, just as long as I hold that control button down, then I'm going to go to the paint bucket and click my color of choice. And they're all done right there. So I find that's something helpful. I just think it helps to visually see the actual layout. Just is it. It helps me visually to see my ancestors there. Now, what would I do? So say I'm in 1790s. Let's just show this in action here. 1790, my ancestor, we're going to use an example. We're going to say, um, okay, so let's use my ancestor up here. We're going to call him, or his name was, um, whoops, James Harward. Okay. Okay, so we're going to say maybe in 1790, he was around um, 25 years of age. Guys, I'm making this off the top of my head. This is an example, so don't hold me to these as facts. Um, we're going to say he, the life event would be his residence where he lived. He lived in Wake County, um, North Carolina. And I realized, oh dear, I've left out. I really meant to put another column here for the source so that I know where I found that. If I need to add something, that's why I love these because these are very, this Google Sheet is so adaptable. I can actually um, add things and, you know, I can delete things, hide things, but I can also, if something comes up that's particular to my research project, I can add the column that I want. So again, to add an, another column, I'm going to highlight the column. So the columns go up and down, rows or, or horizontal. I'm going to right click and I'm going to add one column to the right. And I'm going to call it source. So how do I know that? I'm going to put the 1790 US census. Okay. 
So maybe I make note, any notes that I want to make here. Maybe I say, um, close next to John Smith. So as I think about this, maybe I'm thinking, as kind of pondering, thinking forward, hmm, a question I want to explore might be, is um, John Smith the same as the John Smith in neighboring county, Johnston County, in, oops, in 18. Okay, so there I have my thought. Pro this was a thought that maybe popped into my head. I don't want to lose it, so I've, I'm able to capture it there. Um, again, you can see it's it's quite you know it's long. So if I want to keep everything in the visible in that one cell, I can come up here to this little what's called text wrapping, and I can I can make it wrap around by clicking that. Oops, I got the wrong button. I have to highlight the right cell first. I come up here to this little thing. If I hover over this little kind of arrow wrapping era it's called text wrapping if i click on that i have a choice to of how i want that to go i want to actually wrap this text so i'm going to click that middle one there so that's how to very create a very basic genealogy timeline here i tend to do it vertically because it just helps me to scroll down and see what was happening when for my ancestor again these are you can edit these columns to how you want. Some people will put notes. Sometimes I put notes here and sometimes I might add one here for world events because I want to track their progress against events that perhaps were happening on the world stage if they were in perhaps a, an area where there was a war going on and I'm trying to track their movements against some of the political and boundary changes that were happening as well. I hope you found that helpful and can now start to see the possibilities for using those genealogy timelines in your own genealogy research. Now learn more about your genealogy research, learn more about another crucial piece of research such as your genealogy research plan and why perhaps it may or may not be working for you in the video on your screen now.